Shalom, Shalom, Shalom to my people. This is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the theologian of time, dated October 15, 1972. Right here on the Honorable Elijah Muhammad file. O oh Allah, guide me among those of whom thou hast guided for right and preserve me among those of whom thou hast preserved. Befriend me among those of whom thou hast befriended, and bless me in whatsoever thou dost grant me. And deliver me from the evils in which thou hast judged. For surely thou judgest, and none can judge against thee. And surely he whom thou befriendest is not disgraced. Blessed art thou, our Lord, and exalted be thee above that which they set up beside thee. Say ye, Allah is one. Allah is independent, upon whom we all depend. He begetteth not, nor is he begotten. He is one, and there is none like him, and nothing deserves to be worshipped beside thee. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, who came in the person of Master Wallace Farad Muhammad, and I bear witness that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is thy true servant and last divine apostle. Amen. Will everyone please be seated? In the most holy name of Allah, the all-wise, true, and living God, the beneficent the most merciful Savior, soul-finding life giver to we, a sleeping middle of dead people in the wilderness of North America. We forever give praise and thanks to Almighty God Allah for raising in our midst his last and most surely his greatest messenger, our divine leader and teacher in person is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. My beloved brothers and sisters, he will be here in a few minutes. All praise is due to Allah. And we thank you, those of you who travel far distance from the East Coast to the west coast, from the north to the south, who travel far distance to see and hear Allah's last messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The hour is now approaching that he will be here in a few minutes. We are living in the time as predicted that nations would rise up against nations. As the Jesus spoke of kingdoms against kingdoms, rulers against rulers, earthquakes in different places, we are living in that time. This is the time and the signs that the Jesus predicted would happen before the coming of God himself. The Jesus called him the Son of Man. He predicted that he would travel from the east to the west in the last days. Upon reaching the west, he would search among the lost found mental dead and raise up one among them. And the one whom he has raised up among us is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. My beloved brothers and sisters, I won't prolong the time. I'm going to call before you a hard-working minister of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He is also an attorney at law. And he is the minister of Muhammad Temple No. 5, Cincinnati, Ohio. Brother Minister David Bacha.
Assalamu alaikum. In the most holy name of Almighty God, Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful Savior, the finder and life giver to we, the sleeping, mentally dead, so called American Negroes. He to whom all praise is due and to whom we forever give thanks and praise. For our beloved leader, teacher, and divine guide, the most honorable and humble Elijah Muhammad, I greet my beloved brothers and sisters again with the holy greeting, peace and the paradise of Ayy Salaam Alaikum. My beloved black brothers and sisters, it is indeed a pleasure and an honor for me to be here with you this afternoon on behalf of the truth which Almighty God Allah, who appeared in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praises are due forever, revealed to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad for you and me, the black man and woman of America. We think in terms of the wonderful time in which we as black people now live, the time of the work of the honorable Elijah Muhammad, a man who is engaged in the work of binding up those things which have separated you and me from one another for at least the past 400 years. The bitter experiences of our forefathers under slavery, where they were taught to love the slave master and to hate themselves, which heritage of mentality and intellectual death was passed on to you and me, and which heritage has been perpetuated and kept alive in us through the teachings of the slave master's filthy religion, which is called Christianity. It is indeed a wonderful thing for we, the Muslim followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to observe that present with us this afternoon are brothers and sisters of the nation of Islam, some of whom do not yet know that they are members of the nation of Islam, but who have been fooled as we who now follow the Messenger of Allah were once fooled into believing that we are members of the nation of America, when America has been our slave master. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the principles of international and universal justice and understanding bear witness that a slave can never become a citizen of the government of the slave master. Never have we known a time in the short history, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us, of those who have been our slave masters for the past 6,000 odd years, many people who were supposed to have been enslaved were ever free by becoming members of the government that had enslaved them. But you and I, the so-called American Negroes, are unique in our experience of being slaves to America and being the victims of a slave religion called Christianity. We were fooled into thinking that we had been free when we were accepted into the church, the religion of our slave master. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has made clear in the events of history and our own intelligence upon reflection bears witness, and our own nature bears witness that instead of becoming free, we have become more closely entwined with the slave master. We have become a more dutiful and a more obedient and a more useful tool to white people since the time when old Mark Abe Lincoln was supposed to have been a important uh, factor in our being free than we were when we were in chattel slavery. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the slavery which we now suffer from is a very uh, sophisticated slavery by comparison to the time when our forefathers were in chains and manacles. For their uh, hands and their feet were physically bound, while with you and me, we are sufferers of mental slavery. Our minds are bound to the slave man. But we are living in a time when Almighty God Allah and praises do forever is exalting the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and making him known to you and me, the black man and woman of America. Messenger Muhammad is renowned the world over, and leaders of nations and governments all over the world come regularly to sip of the wisdom which Almighty God Allah implanted in the head of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But as it is written in one place in the book that a prophet is not without honor except in his own country. And as we have come to understand from the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that most certainly he is more than a prophet, but this particular phase of scripture is applicable to him because you and me, the people that God fashioned him for and gave him to, are the ones who know less about him than any other people. 
When we come to know him and to understand who this blessed man is that we have in our midst, we will know him to be the best friend that black men and women have ever had. But we are happy to see some of our brothers and sisters who are visiting with us this afternoon, and we are happy to be able to tell you that the man that you are about to hear is the man who has the answer to the problem of black people. Regardless of your walk of life and regardless of your station in life, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the man that God has given the key to your and my problem. <laughs> All holy praise and suit will allow for the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So we take this opportunity on behalf of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, and on behalf of the staff and the laborers and the Muslims in general of Muhammad's Temple of Islam Number 2 and of the Nation of Islam throughout the hells of North America to welcome our lost-found black brothers and sisters who are visiting with us for your first time. And in addition, we also would like to take this opportunity to welcome those of you who are not necessarily here for your first time but who may be visiting us after having been with us once before, but who have not as yet accepted Allah as your God, Islam as your religion, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as your leader and teacher. We are happy to have you back with us, for it is here that you belong, with God's last messenger, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We are very proud and very confident in our welcoming to you, the black men and the black women who are with us this afternoon, as visitors to Muhammad's temple because we know that you have arrived at home. We know, as we have already said, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the man with the answer to the problems of all black people. We know because he has been proved to be the answer to the problems which we have. Those of us who are presently enrolled with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as students of his are from the same walk of life as those of you who are visiting with us. To put it in a poetic sense, as we now are, it is our prayer to Allah that very soon you will be. And as you now are, but yesterday we once were. And the only difference between the black man who is not actively engaged in the work in the nation of Islam behind the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and those of you who have not yet accepted is the fact that God has blessed us to meet with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad a minute or two before you. But he is the leader and teacher to all black people, and in particular to all black people of America. Messenger Muhammad is the father of the very idea of nationhood and togetherness among black people. All praise is due to Allah for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Whatever source and idea of nationalism or black pride came to you and me from, the initial source of it was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> Almighty God Allah and the person of Master Farad Muhammad came to America over 40 years ago, but he was perceived by only one man, although he was seen by many men and women. I say he was perceived by only one man because only one man recognized him to be who he was, and that was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> Only one man recognized him to be the savior to the black man and woman of America. Only one man recognized him to be almighty God Allah. Only one man recognized him to be the answer to the prayers that we had been taught to pray in the Christian church but never knew the meaning of. Only one, one man recognized him to be the answer to the role that is styled in the Bible as the second coming of Jesus. Only one man recognized him as the one who had come to uh, wipe away your and my sin and to save us from that which we had suffered from as a result of following after the slave master. And that man was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. All praise is due to Allah for the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. While our forefathers and some of us who are living today were in the white man's church singing songs about where he leads me, I will follow. 
and singing songs about just a closer walk with thee. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was following in the steps of the Savior to the black men and women of, the, of America, of the world, and more particularly of America. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was having a close walk with God. As a matter of fact, the closest walk that any man has had with God since the creation. And the purpose of this close walk that he was experiencing with God was to be qualified and equipped to do the job of uniting and putting love in the hearts of those who had been called Negro and nigger, colored people, coons, and all manner of vastly degradating terms. He was the man who would do the job that people said could not be done. We as black people had been taught to sing the song that a nigger ain't nothing, never was nothing, and never will be nothing, and we are niggers. We had been taught to accept without question the proposition that people who were called niggers could not be united to do anything. We had been uh, the victims of the idea that black people never had a history, they never accomplished anything of worth, and they never would accomplish anything of worth. And the only thing that black people could do to re obtain recognition was to model themselves after white people. At a time when this was the way of life, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was being prepared to do the job which he is now doing, the job of putting to the lie the proposition that black people cannot unite. For the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is uniting the black man and woman of America. He is doing the job which they said could not be done. A father carries with him the seed of life. And this seed is planted in his chosen mate in marriage, a mother, and a baby is born. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad in his closer or in his close walk with Almighty God Allah was receiving the seed of nationhood for black people. At a time when the one of the most remote ideas in black America, one of the most remote ideas in the Christian church, and especially the black church, was the fact that black people were anything separate, anything important other than as slaves and tools to white people, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was receiving the basic fundamentals of nationhood for black people. And then after the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had been blessed to receive this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the true history of the black man and the true role of the black man in the great eventful day to which we had now arrived, shortly thereafter it was necessary in his preparation by the permission of Almighty God Allah for him to have to flee for his life to preserve that seed that he had been implanted with. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, as his history bears witness, was forced to run throughout the length and breadth of America to preserve his life and to preserve the wisdom which Almighty God Allah had implanted in him for you and for me. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has made it plain in his teaching to us that he ran not to save himself for himself, but to save himself and the wisdom which God has left him with for you and for me. All praise is due to Allah for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the true and the only rightful one that can claim the title of being the father of black nationhood. Everywhere the honorable Elijah Muhammad went, he met with black people, because black people are spread throughout the length and breadth of America. And everywhere he met black people, regardless of the name that he used at that time, he was the messenger of Allah, and he was busy about his father's business, teaching the truth which God had given him. Everywhere the Honorable Elijah Muhammad put his foot down, truth was implanted. The seeds of truth were left. Many of them did not blossom. Some of them are yet uh, smoldering and dormancy and will come to uh, life in, a very, in the very near future. But they were planted by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Everywhere he put his foot down, he began to teach the truth that Almighty God Allah had implanted in him. The black man is the original man. The black man is the maker of the earth. The black man is the owner of the earth. The black man is the cream of the planet earth. The black man is the God of the universe. This was a strange and a new, unique and a peculiar doctrine at that time. For it had not yet become fashionable to talk in terms of being black and white, 
being black and beautiful. There was not a popular song on the hit parade called This Nation Time at that time. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was establishing the seeds which have sprung forth in these literary manifestations of the truth which God blessed the Honorable Elijah Muhammad with. He taught that the white man is the devil. Yaqub grasped the devil, the stuff of the planet Earth, wherever he went. He taught the greetings of peace. He taught that the black man had been lost in hatred and in enmity long enough, and it was time that he had peace. He taught the greeting of as Alaikum and the response of Wa-Alaikum Salam. Sometimes because of the circumstances under which he found himself, he could only be at a particular place for a very short period of time and had to move on. But when he moved on, the spot that he had been in was uh, never the same. For he planted a seed that could not die and would not die, for it was a divine seed of wisdom from the Lord of the world, Almighty God Allah. <laughs> All praise is due to Allah for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Not only was the uh, terrain of America absent of any concept of black nationhood, but on the world scene, there was no real movement of consequence that recognized black people as a people worthy of recognition in the international councils of nations. For at the time, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was doing his first work. The world had not yet met, even with the uh, brown nation of India, which came into being by permission of the slave masters of the world in 1947. The world had not yet come to face with the uh, fact of the first black nation uh, after colonization by white people on the continent of Africa, Ghana, which came into being in 1957. There was no uh, world council and no world opinion that dictated at that time that black people should be free. We must bear in mind and we must remember that at the time the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was teaching that the black man is the original man. That no other person, black or white, had dared to utter publicly that any black man had any rights that any white man was uh, duty-bound to respect. As a matter of fact, no person, black or white, had dared to take the position that a black was even the equal to any white man. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was at that time, when it was not popular and it was not a fad, not only teaching that black people are entitled to equality with white people, but he was teaching that black people are in fact the supreme being. And whenever... <laughs> All praise is due to Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Whenever black people uh, were challenged by any scholar, white or black, and whenever the Honorable Elijah Muhammad the wisdom which God had blessed the Honorable Elijah Muhammad with was challenged. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, holding fast to those lessons and those principles which he had received from the Lord of the world, would always emerge as the champion. He would always be able to establish within the realm of reason and understanding that what he was teaching from Almighty God Allah was in fact the truth. And it was this experience and it was this activity which planted the seeds of worthiness in black throughout the country. And now black people are wearing their hair in bushes. Black people are wearing dashiki. Black people are talking about I'm black and I'm proud. Black people are talking about this particular source and that particular source, and they're giving credit to their newfound pride and blackness to this particular Johnny come lately in the field of black pride and black nationhood. And they're giving uh, credit to this particular group and that particular group. Black people are taking the names of creatures which the Honorable Elijah Muhammad from the wisdom of Allah blessed him with his products that we, the black nation, created as their God. And they are lowering themselves to worship animals of the jungle and using them as symbols. When the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that we ourselves, with the wisdom which God has given him, are the ones to be used as a guide. We are the ones that God has chosen to make a new ruler. And we need no uh, mascot from the cat world, or no mascot from the dog world, or no mascot from any of the kingdoms that the black man created. We need only to turn ourselves to the one that Almighty God Allah has made the father of black nationhood, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and address ourselves to becoming good students of that which God has given him for us to learn, to make us rulers, and to make us capable, and to make us worthy of the new day to which we have arrived. 
But we are happy that you are here, black brothers and sisters, that you have come to the source of wisdom. You have come to the fountain that God has established among us. You have finally arrived at the true place where black nationalism, black nationhood, black pride, black intelligence, black wisdom, knowledge, and understanding began for the black men of America, the most honorable and humble Elijah Muhammad. So my dear beloved brothers and sisters, we welcome you, we are happy for your presence, we invite you to sit back, to relax, to listen attentively to this man that you are about to hear. For he is that which if your mind or your mouth has never asked for him, your very nature has craved for him. He is a man who has that which is in accord with your nature for you. And if you will but give vent to your natural self, you will take it and take hold of it and be blessed. I have enjoyed these few minutes with you, and at this time I close as I began, in the name of Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praises are due forever, and in the name of his divine servant and apostle, the God-made leader and teacher and guide for you and me, the most honorable and humble Elijah Muhammad, as I turn you back into the hands of Brother Minister Yusuf Shah, Messenger Muhammad's assistant minister here at Headquarters Temple, Muhammad Temple Number 2, the greetings of peace and paradise. As-salamu alaykum. All praise to you, Allah. That was Brother, that was Brother Minister David Bacha from Muhammad Temple Number no. Five, Cincinnati, Ohio. My beloved brothers and sisters, our beloved leader and teacher, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, will be in in just a. Our first guest, my beloved. The messenger of Allah, the honorable Elijah Muhammad. All praise to you, Allah. Salam alaikum. Alaikum alaikum. You may be seated. This time, I don't have to beg you to forgive me for being late. <laughs> of course, I'm not right on the minute of two. I'm still 20 minutes from that. But I thought I would listen at you a little bit. So I sneaks up sometime and sit out and listen at what's going on inside. And if it don't sound so well, I'll keep going, passing the temple up. I'm very happy to see your smiling faces here this afternoon. You look as you should. Beautiful, original, Muslim. Everyone that I see in here is a Muslim. Whether you like it or not, you are a Muslim. All black people are Muslim. All over the planet Earth. So, since I see you don't look white, you must be a Muslim. <laughs> I've got something with me that is not a Muslim. That's this call. No, it is not a Muslim itself. 
you have heard that we came from Africa. Well, you don't have costs in Africa too much because it's not cold enough to give you a coal to cough from in some places. Now, in some places, it's a little chilly. So, brothers and sisters, we are here this afternoon to correct you of some of your mistakes <laughs> and to declare you innocent of those mistakes. <laughs> and some of those mistakes that we are here to correct you on, you are guilty. And we want to correct you in the public so that the public won't think that we are giving you these mistakes ourselves and backing you up in. I don't back you up in to other than the truth. I don't care what you say it could be on me. Don't call me Mr. Muhammad. You are God. You are Master Farad Muhammad. Don't tell me that. Master Farad Muhammad is the one that I am representing. <laughs> I am the man that just wants to take my own place and leave the place that I don't belong in to the man that belongs there. I have heard that you put in your place, not you physical. Some of you so called believers, I have to call you that, are put in your place in somebody else's place and making you somebody else. And what you are making is ever than the truth. We want our people to be reconverted out of other than the truth into truth. We don't want to add nothing to the truth because that will make it other than the truth. So we're going to make now a habit of exposing you before those that you told others in the truth to. <laughs> to let those who were speaking the truth, pardon me, it sounds like I said speak, who were speaking the truth, that they know that you was not telling them the truth. <laughs> I don't back you up in telling others in the truth. So not only do I not back you up in telling and you telling others in the truth, I am going to force those who are seeking the truth to not to back you up in. Walk out on it. Because I'm going to tell them the truth. And if you tell them other than the truth, I'm going to tell them that you told other than the truth right before their face, like you told them other than the truth to their face. I'm going to tell them the truth to their face. I am not here to preach lies. I am here to preach the truth. You have lived under falsehood all your life. The truth has come and falsehood must vanish. We were born on the falsehood. We love falsehood rather than truth. As the Bible puts it, that being born on the darkness, we love darkness rather than light. 
So when light came, we fled back looking for darkness. We want to correct you. You have many things distorted, putting out to the people as though I teach you that. So that you will get your other than the true perception. Brothers and sisters, I do not teach this people other than the truth. What I teach is true. I'm not here to add nothing to the truth. I'm not here to try to make you think that I'm something that I'm not. If you think that I'm trying to make you see me in the light of something that I'm not in, get your book and come on and I will get my book. And I will prove to you that I don't go beyond the scope of my on at our other mission that Allah have given to me. If I say anything beyond what I have been missioned to do, that you can't find me backed up in it, in the scripture of truth, come to me. I pay you a hundred dollars for everyone. Oh no, that's not enough. Give you ten thousand dollars in for every story that I tell you other than the truth of my mission and of my work. If you find anything that I'm doing that you can prove that it is even other than right. I will give you $10,000 if you cannot locate the answer in the scripture of truth. There never was a false prophet sent to the people in the past. And this is not one standing before you. Some of the things that I do, you may label as being other than right, but that, that's just because you have not read the scripture. You have learned what the last man should look like, what he should do, and how that the book teaches you he is a full fellow and you don't take time to read what a full fuller is. When a man is brought to you and he is set by another one, he fulfills Jonah's uh, scripture. Well, then you've got to go read Jonah and learn what Jonah did to see whether or not this man fulfilled his work. Fulfill means to do the same work that that man did. Then that man that you are talking to or present before you is fulfilling. But if you don't see Jonah's work in this man's work, then he don't fulfill Jonah's work. Fulfill means to do what another one does. So be careful about how you label people. To be something that they are not. I want you to know that I don't condone falsehood. And if you want to do so, you are 
are not following me. You're following yourself. I have some brother that is just going out making up texts of their own and delivering them for you to believe. I'm going to teach you the history of Jesus that Allah gave to me. But please don't you try and teach it unless you're going to teach the truth. Some of you is just going wild, telling everything of what you think. We don't want what you think. We want what God has taught us. Want His thinking and not yours. Uh, the sister over here, where is she? Come out here, Sister Secretary, and let us hear some of this uh, teaching that is going on so I can straighten it out. I want these people to know the truth. I don't want them to come here and listen at others in the truth out there from the mouth of some of you who call yourself representing Islam. I don't want you to listen to no other than the truth. And I want to know the other than the truth that you are hearing so that I can stop that man's mouth. He won't be backed up by me. beloved leader and teacher, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Dear apostles, brothers and sisters, and to our visiting guests, there are some old Muslims telling other than the truth. And the messenger gave me the privilege to tell you all that there are quite a few new ones coming into the nation of Islam, and we don't want you to think that we are behind such other than the truth. And with the messenger's permission, I'm going to read you some of this that they are circulating. Supreme Wisdom, Seventh Year Teaching, Minister Awakening. Well, if they're teaching this, they're going to be putting the people back to sleep. Wisdom of 60 Degrees, Master Farad Muhammad, and its meaning and somatical breakdown. Note. This is what they have on here. These teachings are only for the learned and not the profane. It should be the other way around. It is taught in supreme wisdom as well as the fundamentals of supreme wisdom in the seventh year advanced study that Master Farad Muhammad came from a faraway land, the holy city of Mecca, in the east to the shores of North America as a merchant and peddler of silk. The faraway land represents the unknown. The word far away does mean unknown. Far away means the unknown. And its root is the same as the word farad. The word farad, which is the same as the word farty of the Arabic. Master Farad Muhammad was a traveling merchant. This comes from the word farnet, which means travelers, and the word far and man, which means a wayfarer or traveling peddler or merchant. The word farnet itself means a traveler. The selling of the silk stems from the word farandine or faran, which is the fabric of silk. His goal is separation of the four originals, brown, yellow, red, black, from the white race. Negative forces. That's tremendous. Now, I never taught nothing like that. This is made teachings by the, the one who is teaching. He made it up himself. And he desired to make it up himself because that he wanted to have something odd in the teaching that you may look upon him as some great 
author of that which you have never heard. Read this. Read this. Yes, sir. The answer lies in the actual meaning of the word Bharati itself. Bharati is a dark brown date grown in Arabia and California. This plant, which represents the American so-called Negro, who was taken from Arabia and placed in California. And Just a minute, sister. This is not the meaning of Bharati. And if there is a Muslim here that knows what Bharat means, he can stand and tell you. And if there is not one other than myself, I can tell you what it means. It don't mean no such thing. Bharat is a name that is known by the scientists to be an attribute that is not placed among the 99. It means that which is the beginning, that which is opening. This is the first. This is the name of our prayer. The first. And that uh, people going out trying to accept these Arab words to you according to what they think. You shouldn't listen to them until you write them down and send them to me. That's right. And I will get the understanding. If I don't get it out of the Quran, there's other books of the Arab language which encrypt their language, their names. It's there. We can get it. But don't you try and use your own explanation of it. Read on. Then they, the apostle, they go on and quote you. They say the messenger says that California is the devil's last stronghold. The state of California represents white America being the golden state, blonde hair. And the root of the word California, which means white, the word Cali means white. I don't teach you that California is the devil's stronghold. I don't teach you that. The whole USA is the devil's stronghold. Incomplete, invisible, transparent, white, crystal, parenthesis Christ. But Christ represents the His, Master Farad Muhammad, being the reflector, reflects the vacuum unto man, black man. The vacuum is the so called Negro being in a state of mental stagnation. Just a minute. I want to say to you who is listening to all of this, it's no teachings of mine. This is a made teaching by someone that uh, they should stand up and, and tell me how that they become interpreted in the names and teachings in that way that they are done. If such one is here done, if the author of such stand now and explain to me. I was with him for near three and a half years, day and night. And that that he taught me, I'm here to bear witness. And I've been bearing witness, and I've been representing it to you for 42 years. And I don't think I should make that awful mistake of what he went over with me day and night. Read on. This is called Supreme Wisdom, fifth year teaching. The birth of the Savior, Master Wallace C. No, 
the supreme wisdom that I teach you is what Allah has taught me. That wisdom I call the supreme wisdom, which is the supreme wisdom. Yeah. In the year 1852, black diplomats of the Nation of Islam met in the holy city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia to discuss with the 12 minor wise scientists they had been summoned the crucial world problem between the black nations of the earth and the white races. The conference consisted of statements concerning the rapid technological and scientific advancement that had progressed within the white civilization. The other important attachment that the General Conference discussed was how and in what way did all these advancements affect the black nations and the planet. The cities of Asia, which were represented, were Qubal, which is located in Afghanistan, Kars in Pakistan, Baghdad in Iraq, Ankara in Turkey, Cario, excuse me, I'm pronouncing it exactly the way they have it spelled here. Cario in Egypt, Lacio in Burma, and the country with the most delegates taking China. The next country. Now, go ahead. The next country, India, also had a large body that was represented, which were from the city of New Delhi. During the same year, there was also a large conference meeting, which, which excuse me, which was being held on the inhabited planet of Mars. It was held on Mars. What a life. I wish you'd stand up so I could send you out right now. This is what gets the people wrong in their understanding of us. There stands a lie on this coin, there stands a truth one on that coin. We don't know which one to believe. Just saying whatever comes up, all you know you want to tell something different from what you have heard. I don't want that kind of man following me, nor a woman. Don't add to what you hear me say, nor take from what you hear me say. It is the truth that I have received. When you go and add and take from, you making it other than the truth. So I want to tell new people to stop listening at any such talk or teaching that is not in the same words that I'm teaching them. And I'd rather for all of them to come here. And then if they find me telling other than the truth, then the whole teaching is other than the truth. I'm mixing it up. But brother, you won't find me telling you other than the truth. Not nothing I say. If you think I'm telling you other than the truth, go and explain it to me, what you think is other than the truth, and I will give you $10,000, a check for $10,000 before you leave here. Yes. And if that is not enough, I'll make it 10,000 times 10,000. My greatest desire is to tell you the truth, because a liar read us, and we can't leave that liar with his lie. We have to have truth to go from him. And anything that I say, you always is welcome to question me on it. I don't run from you just because you want to question me. 
why I should say not. That's what I'm here for. For you to question me on the knowledge of the truth that I say I am teaching. You are off that freedom by God himself who taught me to ask him questions. Learn all about yourself. I am equipped with the truth from Almighty God of love. Some of it you may not understand. But don't try to condemn that which you don't understand yourself. It to pass it out nothing. Just old plain truth. Have some more. All nature recognized the birth of Wasi Farad Muhammad, even the elements within nature. There were five wise doctors who delivered the infant because specialized care had to be taken whereas not at any time should the child's head interfere or touch the walls of his mother's uterus. It is taught that hardly an ounce of blood prevailed in the delivery of the child. The place of the birth was, took place in a special located within a building which was located in the holy city Mecca. This special chamber was constructed in perpendicular of the earth's axis and in direct tangent of the earth's magnetic force field being that Mecca is located at the center of the Earth's magnetic core, because during the time of birth, the magnetic gravitational pull field between all the planets in the universe had positioned and centered in conjunction to one another's cores beyond the degree of 99 and 9,000. This is why so many of us get uh, misunderstood. I never taught nothing like that. This is a makeup of that person teaching you something that he was not taught. Other than the truth he's carrying out to people who was born out of the curse of truth, born under the chief liar, the devil. And he taught them how to lie. And he came out after he heard it to, following the devil, teaching you other than the truth himself. These people I want you to run down. Bring them before me so I can put them out of our discussion. They're doing no good for themselves nor you. These are the liars who goes out after hearing the truth and add to it, take from it, to make it sound different or make you think that he's wiser than the God himself. He is in telling other than the truth. This is what I want you who are visiting us, get out and you get the hold to it, and you can't understand it, and you walk away from it. For the most in the 20 weeks that I have been visiting you here at this house, I want to straighten out these kind of other than the truth teachings, that you may know the truth from myself who received it directly from the mouth of God. And as I say, I'm willing to pay with my life for lying to you if you find me lying. No, I'm not going to lie. No, sir. I'm going to tell you the truth. If not, but one of you come here to listen at it. I won't add a lie to it to make a house full of people to listen to other than the truth. I'm going to teach you the truth. You have any more? Yes, sir. This cap was made, pardon me, after the child had been born, 
the doctors placed a metallic-like cap over his head. This cap was made of a special cloth which had, was, been treated with certain fluids and then woven with a highly special metal, soft, which was sewn as thread. This metal was weaved into the cloth of the cap. The child was then wrapped with special cloth which had been treated in certain oil. He was then placed into a special small room chamber which had been constructed with the original where the oxygen content was totally different from that on the outside. The child remained in this chamber for a period of 27 days and then was taken to the surgeon who performed an advanced operation upon the center located in the spine, which took exactly 76 hours, no more, no less. It is taught in the Birth and Science of the Savior, Seventh-year Minister's Lessons, that after this particular operation had been completed, that the child's body started to produce a yellowish white glow all around his entirety. It is taught that this glow lasted for 12 days. Where now, man that can lie, that will. to be made to wait until the last believer walks in the gate of heaven and then throw him in the middle of hell. I come to a place like this and you mislead me, telling other than the truth of what the messenger has taught? My brother, I don't care to walk with you in the gate. What do you think I am? A liar? I'm proof. Yes, sir. I'm here directly from the face of God as is written. Yes, sir. I didn't came of my own. I was risen up in the midst of you and sent to teach you the truth. And no man on earth could teach you what I'm teaching you. It's right not the truth. Why are you add to it? Why are you throwing other than the truth in truth? You don't do that to be seen and heard because people listen at you, they will tell it. And then you will be brought before me one day. And I have power with God to put you to a finishing touch. <laughs> I'm certainly very dissatisfied of you rising up, taking hold of the truth, and trying to put it to the people as other than the truth, from yourself. We may not like you after a while, and I ask you to stop before we dislike you. We are mean God himself. You are doing the wrong thing. We are here to kill the lion. Destroy him who has destroyed the people of righteousness and telling them and misleading them in the way of other than the truth. This is a good way to learn who your brother is. 
Just make up cold lies and go tell it to the people. Make them to think I'm teaching you that. Because it's me that you're coming to. I'm not teaching the people other than the truth. It is you who are taking and bringing the truth apart and adding to the pot your own lie of it. You won't get away with it. I'm more certain of that little fellow that they call a lamb in the Bible. Bound to get you for it. Why will you come here to get something to go and tell other than the truth on it? Get truth now and then add other than the truth to it. You shouldn't come here. This is the wrong place. This is where you come to learn the truth. And I just hire you to prove what I teach here other than the truth. I do that every time I get on the stand. I want people that love the truth. I want people that love the result of truth. And not the result of a life. I can prove everything I teach to you. Everything. I prove to you that, that it is the truth. Not only that, everything I do, I can prove that it's the truth. professional lawyers who are going to politics. Oh. No. No. I'm going to stop the sister secretary from reading off this uh, other than the truth around here after looking there seems you have two or three more pages, and that uh, some of it even goes into politics, so I'm going to leave it go till next time when I don't have too much of business to take up with you, then I'll let this go in again. We will have some more of this next Sunday. We want to get rid of this. We believe that we have very intelligent people visiting us at this time, and we want them to listen at something of truth and something of fitness that we should be doing, and not to be listening at a lot of little Yelmire brothers who don't know what they are talking about, and they're just opening their mouth, saying what they think. But why I have this much read off to them, I want them to know that I'm not down here 
picking up no such foolishness. And I don't teach it. This is just a foolish brother or a sister that is taking the teaching, trying to make himself look wise and making himself look like a fool. I don't condone and nothing of the kind. The truth alone is sufficient to make you to admire it or you can disbelieve it and leave it. We're here again trying to make you to see the importance of us doing something for self. I have with the help of Allah and the, and the believers who follow me are uh, laying to you an example of people who want to do something for self. And since that you are qualified to help us, come in and help us, we will greatly appreciate your help and pray to Allah to give you the quality, if you don't have it, that is needed to join up with us and help us. What we are trying to do on Cottage Grove, building up the east side of it for you on set and for you and the population of the city to admire. We learn of some of our people who is qualify to help build, we're going to put a map to it. And this don't mean that you are rejected or anyone else. We just want the people that can build what we give to them in blueprint. And if you cannot build it according to the blueprint, don't accept it. Because you hurt yourself with your own people. We don't want you cast it out of the job that we see that probably we can borrow the money to have it done. Confess what you can do. And don't tell us what you cannot do. Because we are really glad if you can do it. But we don't want you to accept the job we give to you and you know you can't do it. Just because you are a brother. They say, brother, I'm your brother, but I can't do this job then we will know what to do. But don't take a job from us knowing you're not qualified to do it. No. That hurts you and hurts us. We want to admire your ability to do the thing. So now we are opening up quite a few jobs. If you can do these jobs, we will give these jobs to you. But don't say you can do them and you know you can't. Don't hold us down. We have quite a few jobs that you may be prepared to do and maybe you are not prepared to do. But they're here. We don't have a lot of money as you may think, but we have a lot of credit. And you don't have to worry about our credit, so
so long as you can get the job and you get paid for it. Right around this building here, we have a lot of work yet to do to make it like we want. The job has been signed over to other contractors that claim they know how to do the job and then teach that they will do it right. So they will be confounded right around this building here for a few weeks to do the job that we have for them to do. And I want them to do what I'm asking them to do. And I know you will be happy when you see the job done. As you know, I don't like bad looking job. I'm so happy to learn that we have people among us can do anything. We have some wise and well-trained people, but they never was able to get together and do something for self. I want them to get with me and I will show them some places where they can go to work and do something for self. Yes. And uh, to leave such great people said I'll by just listen to thoughts and never materialize the thought. It is not good for us. Get these people that have the know how to work. Let them do the work. Who would be any gladder than I or happier than I to know that I have my own people here that have knowledge of that which we want to do. There is no man among you that is happy as I am to know that you can do these things for yourself. We are not having a complete blank of the thing. Some people think that none of us knows nothing, but nothing. But we do have people that know something, but they have not proved their knowledge so that others will know that they know. I have this job by the Lord of the world. And that I'm not afraid that I cannot do the job as long as you are with me. So, we're going to get together, we're going to make our faith of habitation as the Bible calls, look like men of thought was born there and not a slave. We don't want no slavery and mark shining behind us. Where we go along, we want civilization to shine. And I am beginning to force myself to believe that all the materials that we need is with us. What a wonder it will be to come on the south side and let the people see what you have done for the south side. 
Come with him to a place where civilization shines up. I did not know you was here like this. You qualified contractor, worker. I didn't know it. But now I'm beginning to learn. And happy am I. You know how much I love a brother. Why don't you pre present yourself? Whom I love. I love you. And I'm out here battling the alone. And you are sitting around here plenty strong. Plenty qualified to help. I'm in and help. Because you are qualified to help. My beloved brother and sisters, with what you write to me, if you would come on and put it in effect, the people will think that a nation from abroad is living in Chicago South Side. In this way, hold on now, brother. Don't take too many pictures. I'm not here to take all of these, have all these pictures made of me until I do more. So some of you love to do this. And I don't love that you do that which I have not done myself. All of this uh, great what you're trying to publish of me, I want to be sure I am worthy of it. <laughs> we want to feed ourselves and my beloved listeners, if you want to feed your own self, you just compel to go to the farm. That is where people find food. Don't be ashamed to go and do for yourself and raising food in the country. Original, that's where our fathers came from. And I want you to know if we are to be a nation, and a strong nation, we must go to the farm to feed our stomachs. And there we can feed even our back with good clothes. Put good clothes on our back from the farm. We have found here in Georgia and Alabama a start. You may go see. We have out here in Michigan a start. You may go see. Have good ideas for us? Come back and tell us. We welcome your idea to make it more prosper than it is. These things we have to do if we expect to live on this earth and if feel out of it that which we must have on top of we got to go to it. We've got to dig into it. Like the devil has done. He dug into it and he made himself rich and a stomach full of its food from our labor. 
sank over there. He looked at us and made us pull out of the earth its arm, wealth for himself and left us poor. Now, he said we are free. Let's make good of this freedom. Then if he tries to hinder you from making good of that which he claims he has given to you, then make good both ways. Yeah. Make good of stopping him from getting what he has given to you. I have lots more I want to say to you, but I don't think that uh, there is too much patience. I'm not a preacher that will get up there and yell to see you yell. I'm a different preacher. I want to teach you. I can yell because my father, when I was born, he was yelling. But I found out that yelling is not good unless you are yelling out something. They would yell because that by divine senders, they were divinely made from the beginning. But they had laws like the book that is the season. The salt was dead. It had no season. But now with season we have. We give them the season. And they can, with the season, Put it out in works and not out in a lot of yelling. Talk. To be yelling over there across the street that you see a cloud coming up and the people look out there and see it's fair, then it's fair. You're a false yeller. So since we have qualified people to help us, Let's prove to those people that we are worthy to be helped. Not prove to them that we are liars. And we are asking on the base of others in the truth for help. No, we are not going to let them prove us others in the truth. So you that is trying to make the public think that you are telling the truth when you are not, I hope you stay home. <laughs> One thing I will warn you of before I move from this platform. Get your name. Come to me, I will show you how to get a name that will live. You can't see the hereafter with the white man's name. Every black man on earth know the white man's name from your name. Don't wear that name. Don't be called by that name. If you don't know nothing but to just to tell the world I'm the Lord servant, but he has not given me his name yet. That's better than giving me the white man's name. Just tell them that, yes, I have a name. It's in my God. Yes, sir. 
possession. Well, what is that? Well, you could call me God. Call me Allah. Call me Jabal. Call me anything but a white man's name. They don't want the name of the devil. The Bible teaches you and me all that hath the name of the beast. Call him a beast. They went down with the beast. I thought it was later than this. So since it's not so late as I thought it was, <laughs> I'm going to change the meeting into questions. You have heard me teach, and you have heard others say they heard me teach. Now, you that desire to question me when you at home. You are here now. <laughs> For a while I'm going to offer you the service. Ask me questions on that which you have heard me teach. I can't say on um, that which you heard my brother say because I just told you some of the brothers is telling others in the truth. <laughs> so if there's anyone that would like to ask me some questions on what you heard me teach, you are welcome to stand up and ask me. Or anything that you like to ask me pertaining to the teaching. Yes, brother. We're trying to get some planes in the air with our initial, not for sure, but we want them at work, yes, sir. helping us. You will soon see some. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Dear Holy Apostle, uh, from the teachings that I've heard, you said that the moon represents, as it is right now in the first quarter, the original black people. Am I right, sir? No, it don't say really represent the black man in the stage it's in. Uh, now, the way you see it, but it represents the sign of the black people. That is here in, on, in North America. That is blind, deaf, and dumb, and dead to the knowledge of self. What was once in the knowledge of self. Yes, sir. My question was, sir, what do the other three quarters represent? Pardon me, sir? I was wondering what the other three quarters represented. What was? He, he wanted to know what the other three quarters represented. The other three quarters? Yes, sir. It represents stages in our rise into the knowledge of self. I 
Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Dear Holy Apostle, I'd like to know where is Allah God in the person of Master Farad Muhammad today? He is where he is. Dear Holy Apostle, uh, the event surrounding uh, Pharaoh, could you tell me if that was a, a parable or was that, or did that actually happen? I didn't understand you so well. The Apostle, he said that the events surrounding Pharaoh, did this actually happen or was it a parable? This long failure? No, sir. The events that surrounded Pharaoh. Hmm. Pharaoh in the Bible. Pharaoh. Pharaoh in the Bible, yes, sir. Oh, you're talking about that Pharaoh. Huh? What do you want to know? He about? wanted to know if these events actually happened or are they a parable of sorts? What event? Uh, events concerning the uh, grounding in the Red Sea. Yes. There was signs, the events that took place in the time of Pharaoh and his people and Israel were signs of what you see going on today. Yes. I don't know what sign that you are referring to, but all the history that I have read of, of Pharaoh and his people with Israel is referring to us and our modern pharaoh. I just want to know if uh, Pharaoh, was he a black man or was he a white man? Who? Was Pharaoh supposed to be a black man or a white man? No, he was not white. There was not any. Egyptian that was actually white at that time according to the teachings of the history of Pharaoh and his people. He was not really white people because the origin of the population of Egypt was not made white. They was of the original. This is according to what Allah taught me. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know if one of your teachings or uh, how it came about, but it was a teaching that I've heard. And the question was asked, where did the outcome where man originated came from? I don't quite understand. Uh, 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 I'd like to know where the um, was ma man was a uh, man was originally originated from an atom. Where did this atom come from? Yes, if he was originated from Africa, he is Africa. No, dear, pardon me, dear Apostle. She said she heard of a teaching that man had originated from an atom and she want from an atom and she wanted to know where the atom came from he was originated from what she's saying that man originated she heard a teaching that man originated from an atom that's right and she wanted to know where the atom came from where did that atom came it came from space this is out of space where he was originated. An atom of life within the darkness of the space. And he came out of that atom. 
that was in space. Now you may wonder, how did that atom get in space? <laughs> the history of the space teaches us that at that time, it was nothing but darkness. If there had been light for us to use our glasses on it to find out whether there was an atom of light in it before the atom was exploded to show what it was, we would tell you so, but we can't go that far with you. We don't know how the atom became in space. And what came out of space? A human being. That's as far back as we can go with you. <laughs> this is what Allah taught me. He said to me like this in answer to my question on man, creation. He said, brother, we know that he was created, but when, we can't tell you because we had nothing to go by. And so he had to tell all himself after he had created himself. Then we go from what he said. And I thought that was good truth for me to teach him. <laughs> Something else? Thank you. Thank you. I'm not to tell you other than the truth. I am the next closest one to Allah. I don't think Allah will take a liar for his right hand. To his right hand is a lie. No. I tell you what he taught me. And it's up to you to believe it or let long. Some more. Anything that you want to ask me, I'm very happy to answer if I know the answer. I don't say to you I know all the answers unless he reveal them to me. But if he has revealed them or sometimes you reveal them time you get it out of your mouth. I don't pre previously have the knowledge but while you are asking the question he tells me the answer. Assalamu alaikum, dear holy apostle. Wa alaikum salam. Sir, I was wondering where the lower forms of animal life came from and how it came about. He would like to know where the lower form of animal life came from 
and how it came about. The form of Alamon Rai, I asked him about it. And how did they come here? The first thing he answered, he said, ever since we had an earth, brother, we had the Alamon only. And uh, I said, how was they made? He said, I told you, ever since we had the earth, we had Alamon Rai only. <laughs> Dear Apostle, he said he would like to know of the authenticity of the lost ten books of the Bible. Lost books of the Bible? Yes, sir. He said he wants to know... He's saying that there has been published a book called The Lost Ten Books of the Bible. And he wants to know if this book is, uh, is a true, is the, is the works in the books true? I don't know, brother. He didn't teach me that there was any law. Well, they can. Uh, what puzzles me is, according to the Bible, it teaches that God is a spirit, and that was the main thing that kind of stumbled me when I first heard your teaching. Are these quotes that are in the Bible, uh, have they been added, and how long has this teaching been going on? Ever since the writers of the book. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum I would like to know if the Nation of Islam teaches of a heaven and hell as in Christianity. No, not like Christianity, but it teaches of a heaven and a hell, but not in the same way that Christianity teaches. We teach a heaven and a hell while you live. You cannot be tormented in hell if you are not alive. You gotta be alive to feel the torment. And if you are in a hell, heaven, you gotta be alive to feel the joys of heaven. Sir, there is no such thing as a life after death, then. No, if you are referring to a physical death, a physical death does not tell in a life. It's physically dead. But uh, if you are referring to a spiritual death, that is true, being dead to the spirit of God. You don't have his spirit in you and then we call you dead. I read in the Bible that man would destroy himself. Do you believe that? Pardon me? 
He read in the Bible that man would destroy himself. Do you believe that? Man will be showing himself. Will destroy. Will destroy himself. Will destroy him. Yes, sir. Yes, I believe it. Yes. In what way? In whatever way you build your life up, you don't have no uh, nothing out here that will destroy you. Just because that it can destroy you only when you go to fight each other. But there is nothing prepared out here to destroy you. You destroy yourself. So Allah taught me. What? Is it true that the devil has reached the moon? Why, certainly in physical way, yes. According to their uh, report and their pictures of them on the moon. Now, the other part of what moon represents, we have not reached that part, the part that we preach of equality, that spiritual teaching, and that uh, he have not reached the spiritual equality. That's what we represent the moon for equality between man and man. And therefore that moon has not as yet uh, been reached by the devil. She wants to know, dear Apostle, how the Egyptians managed to get the pyramids as high as they did and with what instruments. Uh, the Savior taught me that they had a hydraulic they used in those days that they don't have in use now and will not put it in use because of the devil, that he will grasp that knowledge. As he don't know it yet, he has been asking the question himself. He said to me, they would put that same hydraulic in effect as soon as they removed the devil. They don't want them to know it. Dear Apostle, she also wanted to know, she said, since black man is the original man, are there black men in among other beings on other planets? I didn't get the teachings of the knowledge of what was on other planets from him as he was trying to acquaint me into the knowledge of myself who is on this planet and other planets. of the last cell, how did the Muslims survive? 
I can't hear. See, I'm too good up here. Yes. She says, in the last days of the lost found, how will the Muslims survive? That's what God came for, to save us from that which uh, he will permit to destroy our enemies. He have come to separate the righteous from the wicked and destroy the wicked and save us from the destruction of that that he's using to destroy the wicked. Uh, dear Holy Apostle, uh, since your teaching on the theology of time, uh, approximately ten weeks back you said that in the destruction of America there was two places of refuge. I was wondering if you could reveal those two places. Two places of refuge. Yes, sir. Did you say I said that? Yes, sir. It was in, uh, in the, uh, since you have been teaching here, it was in the, uh, Muhammad speaks on the theology of time. You mentioned there were two places of refuge. and uh... Well, if I did, there is two. I can prove you there is two. There is one. Number one, with your Lord and my Lord. Good question, brother. To know where you will be saved. Where you will be secure. Dear Holy Apostle, in your teaching today, you indicated that we as black people should uh, get rid of the names that the slave master has given to us over the years. The question that I have is whether or not uh, you recognize the legality and legitimacy of non-Christian names assumed by black people by virtue of court decrees which names have not been given to the black brother or sister by yourself? I recognize any black man's name if he has some kind of origin for it. But uh, I know that if you see the hereafter, which is uh, meaning the destruction of this world, and the name of the devil. That you will have an honorable name and a name that will live and a name that every one of our people will respect and, and will admire. But the name of the devils of this world their name will be destroyed with them. You won't have their name around here to go in. Their language will be destroyed. You won't be able to speak their language. So Allah taught me, after 20 years, 
of destruction of them. You will have to speak your own holy language because no one will talk to you in any other language. Excuse me for looking at the time, please. I got to keep up time. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, brother. Assalamu salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum salam. Uh, this is my second uh, visit here to the temple, and I uh, desire a name and desire to reclaim my own. I was wondering if. Uh, most holy apostle could tell me how I can become, you know, uh, how I can strengthen my belief. Yes, sir. He said that this is his second visit to the temple, and he, he desires to reclaim his own and and for a name, and he wants to know if you, sir, would tell him how he could strengthen his belief. Will I do what? Tell him. Instruct him how to strengthen his belief. Just keep coming here, brother. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, brother. Come right on. Uh, 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 you the, you the messenger from Allah and Odin, uh, Israel. Israel. They don't have no right to, uh, Talk to him. So, so if when the world comes to end, how would they know um, who's the right guy? And uh, they wouldn't know what they would. They wouldn't know. Okay, man. <laughs> and you straighten out his line. When the world comes to end, will Allah turn their back on him, or will He send? Someone over there to uh, save them and tell them who's the right guy. And, and he wanted to know, dear Apostle, when the world comes to an end, will Allah turn his back on the people in the East, or would he send someone to teach them of who the right God is? I'm teaching you of who is the right God myself. The uh, Bible says that he will send his angels from the east to gather us from the west. Anna Mahayma, I'd like to ask one question. After visiting this temple and listening carefully, I would like to know how one can become an angel. He says, after visiting this temple and listening carefully, he wants to know how one could become a Muslim. I believe what I teach you and follow me. about the Great Northern Dean. I read where it was indicated that it wasn't supposed to be eaten, and I was wondering whether or not this has changed or not. The Great Northern Dean. 
the apostle, he wants to know whether or not, he said he had read that the great northern bean was not to be eaten, and he wants to know if that has changed. We uh, don't go for eating the large size beans, though they may be uh, navy beans, but we eat small size of them. That's what he taught me. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Mr. Muhammad, I'd like to know, I read in the Sun Times that um, Master Farad was a drug addict. Is this true? I don't think you have found any drugs here for sale since you've been coming here, have you? Well, he didn't teach us to use drugs that would put us out of our natural mind. Thank you. And in fact, the body, he didn't teach us to use drugs of no kind. We use drugs sometimes due to our weakness of causing our body to need some kind of nourishment of that which is now making us sick. But he didn't teach me that. He told me and taught me how to live, to keep from using anything like drugs. But sometimes we get weak and we go and do that against the nature of our bodies and which they were made in. Then we go and look for something to uh, help us to get back and to the well-being again. And we grab at anything that will give us easement. That be drug. But if you live like he taught me for us to live, we don't need drugs at no time. We eat two, once every two or three days, we won't need no drugs. You say, well, Muhammad, you tell me you use some drugs. Yes, yeah. because I was ever sin myself. I wasn't eating like he told me. Therefore, falling away from the way I was taught, I suffered the consequence. I suppose to hate if I don't live according to his teaching. But I was to do that. I could not be able to teach you if I don't taste the same that you taste. As the Bible teaches you, and all their afflictions, he was afflicted. But yet the pleasure of the Lord will be upon him. But that means by no means that he was guilty of something and that God afflicted him. No, it don't mean that. Like the people thought of Job. Job being a beloved man of God. And he turned him over to the devil. To try him out. Let the devil try him out. As the devil had said to God. Take the hedge away from around him. And that he will crush you to your face. He told the devil go to him but save his life. And so the devil went and he poured on Job everything that he had. That he had those who believed in him 
upon them. But he was unable to change Job's mind. He suffered all of the affliction that was put on him, as he tells you in his book, that God brought him near to death. But nevertheless, he refused to forsake God. And he come out of it. And the devil was defeated. This is the modern joke that we talk about. I have suffered since bronchitis, uh, asthma, and I would say all of it's associated for about near 10 years now. But I'm not ready to cuss God and die. Well, in fact, the Bible, the Bible is talking about us. I asked him about this. Who was he talking about? It? I said, Earth or the Jews and Greeks? He said, No, he's talking about you all. So when it comes to my affliction, he said, Take plenty of it, brother. He said, You will be all right after that. So I go and read over Job's affliction. I said, he did come out of this. And so I believe I'm coming out of mine. <laughs> There's another question someone wants to ask. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I noticed that uh, within a few weeks, the uh, white press and the news media is raging a campaign against Arab, the Arab nations and trying to get public sympathy for the Israelis. And uh, I wonder, could this be because of the fact that the Arab nations are beginning to recognize the black mo Muslim movement here in, in the U.S.? Yes, I believe those who have knowledge of what kind of work I'm doing in America is beginning to recognize it and respect it. I believe. This is the greatest work ever happened in our midst since we have been crucified into slavery by the white man. Never the work of this kind come in his midst that he was in, that he was able to try and attack and win. He don't even question this work. You go out there and bring all you can see out there. Not a one of them would get up and question me. There's nothing for him to question me on. That's right. He knows the truth. That's right. But he's not able to do the truth. That's right. But he knows it. That's right. He gives me credit for teaching the truth. But he's not able to accept the truth. That's right. Because there is no truth in him. wrong side will go to destruction. Do you feel that all men have to die? I want to know what about the Christians you say? Uh, she said that according to the Christian teachings, all men must die, but those who are on the right side of God will go on to an eternal life. Yes, and that's why we are here today. 
because those on the right side mean those who believe in God. And they put that trust in God. And we are descendants of those righteous people. Uh, she wants to know, will we have to suffer death? There is not a life made according to the teachings of God to me that will not taste death. Assalamu alaikum, you all the apostles. Wa alaikum salam. I've always been confused about how an original man like the uh, Egyptian would put in slave another original man uh, like the Hebrews, the Israelites. I'd like to know what made the Egyptian wicked. What made the Egyptians what? What made the Egyptians wicked. He could not understand how an original man like an Egyptian would place another original man like the Hebrews in slavery. And what made the Egyptians wicked? I guess I, I should have somebody up here in my place to listen to. What made the Egyptian wicked? Yes, sir. Uh, there was in their time the wicked man coming among them. Six thousand years ago, the uh, wicked devil got a chance to visit among the Egyptians. Like uh, when England come among the Egyptians and they uh, deceived the Egyptians to the foreign and doing like them. And there was the Turkish people who also there in Egypt and they poured a little of their devil stuff in them under the rule of Pisa. I had two questions to ask them. I wanted to know, uh, have you spoken to God yourself, and uh, how long have you known uh, Ally? Yes, uh, as far as the name goes, I'm Allah and you Allah. I'm not anything more than you in that thing. We're all Allah. Pardon me, sir. Uh, I, his question was, number one, did you yourself speak to God? And secondly, how long have you known Allah? Yes, I thought I was speaking to him ever since I was born. But I didn't know him. I was blinded to the knowledge of him. So he came to me and made himself known to me. This is the way I got known. Now I was trying to seek him, but I wasn't able to approach the right path to get to him because I was blind when I was born by the enemy. Any more? The Apostle, he says that he read in the Muhammad Speaks recently that you were going to come back to the temple and reveal where the promised land was. But he says he's been following Muhammad Speaks and he has not seen you reveal that and he wanted to know if you intended to. Uh, the place where you're in now? You may read 
in the Bible where that Jesus said that it is the Lord's own good will to give thee the kingdom. This means a kingdom that you have to inherit that is not present at that time, but the kingdom of heaven that is the righteous. He intended and it will be this place that he will give the kingdom of the weak. As Isaiah and other prophets prophesy that he gives to us the kingdom of the weak. to know, uh, you just said about uh, Joseph and Mary, Mary just having one child, Jesus. Did they have more than one child after that child was born? Explain. Uh, she said that she's, she's read that Joseph, the, she wanted to know if Joseph and Mary had another child after Jesus. Another child. Another child oh, after right. Jesus. Uh, we find here in the New Testament where that uh, uh, they were inquiring of Jesus while he was teaching that uh, someone told Jesus that his mother, brothers and sisters, was out there inquiring. And that Jesus made it clear that none could be his mother and our brother and sister unless they believed like them. And uh, this shows that uh, his mother and his brother was not good believers in him. If you turn them down like that. He said, these are mine that stand here, meaning those who was on the inside with him. Well, that is true. And the way of the belief, you can't be the brother of a believer or a sister of a believer unless you believe like this. Any more? No more? Then we going to yes brother come right on they about to dismiss salam alaikum wa alaikum salam I would like to ask the honorary Elijah Muhammad were the original scientists black yes according to what God taught me the original one was black they had a, uh, a kind of, uh, well, a circle to themselves, and they were all with Christ. Then what I would like to ask the Honorable Elijah is why do we now have to go to the, uh, to the devil to get our knowledge as far as science? Well, it is not me in your week. I'm not in that way. I don't go to the devil to get knowledge. <laughs> if I had went to the devil to get knowledge, you would attack me on that knowledge, but since I didn't graduate from colleges and universities of here, my knowledge is not of here. All that I teach came from Allah under the name of Master Farad Muhammad. I own praises do forever. I got nothing out of the schools and uh, colleges and universities of the white man. I have none of it. 
But we have to go to the schools, established schools and universities in order to build a nation. You don't have to go to the universities of the devil to be able to teach the nation. As I just told you, I didn't go. I never had to. Just a moment. This is why you must have a team. You can't have a team unless that you get out of what you're in. And getting into another civilization, you have to have the knowledge of how to get in that civilization. So I teach you something new. It is not out there in this civilization. You can't find a step of it. Everything that you teach me, even from age, in the synagogue of this devil's school, it has to be changed from that way and that understanding of A and B over here with us. You say, well, go ahead and tell me. Oh, well, let's go back there and write your name down on the book then. <laughs> this is why the devil put science to every letter of his teaching alphabet and reading, he got signed letters there for you to pay attention to, that this he have recorded for it to be understood in another way. But we have something already recorded and have the other way with it, if you will understand what we are telling you. This is why I invite you to come. I want to teach you that which God has given to me to give to you. And the knowledge of that which the enemy gave to you. So you could know how to compare the two. That's why I'm inviting you to come. If, brother, you will follow me around, here and there from one door of the teaching to the other, I will teach you the meanings of things when I can get you to understand first yourself. And if you ever understand yourself, then the understanding of his sign into higher Learning will come real quick to you. I'm not risen up among you that is blind and deaf and dumb to the signs he uses for his higher knowledge and understanding in his educational system. I know them, but I want you to learn first yourself. So when I teach I'll go with you over there and your own higher education that you will not call me a liar. You will say, yes, this is where I got to. But I didn't know there was more. I will go to you and say, teach it if you want me to. And your own teaching. And I will show you how the devil tricked you and us. I'm not trying to play wise into that which you recognize is wisdom 
and the way it was taught to you? I'm not trying to play wise. I'm only trying to tell you that he didn't tell you all. And what I will tell you of that which you believe you is great. And above what I have been taught, I will prove to you by that before his face that I am telling you the truth that he robbed you instead of bringing you up his feet where he kept you at his feet. I would let you go bring one in here if you like to. And I'll give him a seat up here and I will talk to him before you'll be. <laughs> we are not to be defeated. And we won't be defeated as long as God with us in person. So at this time, I am going to bring our meetings and questions to a close, as uh, it is time that we go home and some of us have to feed the babies. They are hungry, and they will run us out of the house. <laughs> so if you will allow me to stop our meeting at this phase of it, I will thank you. Thank you, dear Parker. I really thank you for having the intelligence to question me on what you have questioned me on because it was not ignorant nor foolish. It made sense. So I thank you and I'm going to ask how many are you visiting us who have not accepted what we teach? Hold up your hand. All you that is visiting us that have not accepted what we are teaching you. Oh, I know there more than that than this. I thought all of you were converted, but you few. I would say Allah has really blessed us. Now, have you been coming here long enough to learn whether or not we are teaching you the truth or other than the truth? Hold up your hand. Are you here that have learned that we are teaching you the truth? Hold up your hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, if you have learned that we are teaching you the truth, I want to see the hand that wants to accept the truth. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> to approve you teaching, are you a word? No, that's a step there. So I don't see no place here. Well, you will get to the minister. Of the secretary. Go back there and give her your name and she will write you down. And you're going to be glad uh, when the time comes. When those pe people start to shoot at each other over there and sinking people's ships, you're going to be glad. 
don't be like the Holy One said that you would be. Oh, would that I had followed the messenger. Oh, would that I had taken away with the apostle after the truth had come to me. So you follow that up by giving your name to the secretary. Thank you so very much for coming to this call for you. And don't let it leave you without you following it. I thank you. The world is in an awful condition. They want to shoot these people so bad. They're outright telling them now. Since Japan has joined up with Korea and China, they are not afraid to tell you that they ready to kill Wao John. That's what they call the devil. So I said, get out of the way of the shooting of Wao John. I thank you for your patience and endurance here this afternoon, and that I hope to see you again soon. Assalamu alaikum.